for the way Navi played. Like, Dendi was sitting in the bottom right side of the map for, like, probably a good five to ten minutes. And they, I don't think they ever got caught out by him. Mm. And, yeah, they just played very solidly. They controlled Roshan very well. And it's not the VT that we knew five months ago, but it's a step in the right direction. Sure. Okay. Uh, we are going to move on to uh, Vernus Pro versus Fnatic. Just a very quick update for you at home as well. Uh, we haven't mentioned the fact that the uh, teams have gone through the lower bracket, obviously, from losing earlier on. Um, Cloud9, as if they were going to make their lives any harder, now face VG in the next match in the lower bracket, uh, which is a kind of revenge kind of match. And, and it would have been the same anyway, because it would have been Na'Vi, who they knocked out previously last year. So that's kind of weird for C9. They're going to have the, pretty much the same route through the lower bracket. Uh, and Empire will take on MVP Phoenix, and uh, that will also be a very interesting game as well. We are going to move on now, and it is Virtus Pro, uh, who, the first team we're going to look at. And also, we're going to take particular attention to someone who's playing his first ever international. But he also sets a record because he's the first ever Belarusian right here at Key Arena. <laughs> When I was a child, like 10 years old or something like that, I hurt my knee and I started to play computer. I start with Quake, Counter-Strike, Half-Life probably, and then some friends showed me Dota. You know, usually when people have friends, they go out, spend some time with them, but most of the time I speak with my friends through the internet and my parents didn't understand that at all. They tried to get me out, like go to some camps, but I was okay with playing Dota. When I start playing professionally, I think that my mother supports me. Sometimes my mother calls me and saying something like, Artyom, I found a photo where you staying with some cup. What's this story to me, please? And she will never understand it, but she, she's doing it because I'm her son. So after TI qualifiers, uh, we lost them, and Navi invited me to be their captain, and it was a good experience, but everything wasn't good. That not means that people in Navi was bad or something like that. I just can't be their captain because we are totally different. I can be a Virtus Pro captain because they understand what I'm trying to do. They say, Artyom, do what you want, we will try to help you as much as possible. And even if Captain Bronx, he will take his experience and everyone will take this experience. This is the best way to grow up as a team. If I want to be the best, I must improve myself as much as possible and become not only a good player and become a good person because Dota is not only about playing Dota, it's even more about communication. When I started playing Dota, it was just a little computer club. And now when I look in back, I really happy and feel proud of myself because now I'm traveling through the world and meet nice people. This has changed my life, really changed my life. First team of our third match in the lower bracket, Venus Pro, and their lineup and their story behind the first ever Belarus player to play in the international. He's a proud man leading his team out into the key arena any moment now. They go head to head with another team who are desperate to prove the doubters wrong as Venus Pro get ready to come out. And Fnatic are there as well. Fnatic, of course, have had a little bit of history under a number of different names throughout the international history. None more so than the boys in orange. They're in orange once more, but now in the colours of Fnatic. And to catch up with all of the things that have been happening to them before they headed into the international, here's Ohio. How does it feel to be representing Malaysia? You have to have a lot of pride for your country. Mm, this is my third year. I mean, it's TI, my third TI and still will be a little bit nervous 
fight against top team in the world. TI3 was a really interesting time for you when you were playing with Orange. A lot of people considered you one of the best players there, one of the most influential players there. Yeah, thank you. Were you were you aware of? Pe did you know that people were saying that about you? Um, I just know about it when I back to Malaysia. A lot of Malaysian fans and Southeast Asia fans they congratulate us and he, they also praise me and I play very well. How do you feel about your chances this year with this team? Recently, our practice is not that good, but I think we still have a chance to. Proceed to the top act first, and if we can do pretty well in every games, I think we still have a chance to get inside the top four. What's the hardest thing that you're working through as a team right now? Our play style is not gonna to work together right now. We are just a little bit split. I mean, we just play our own style, but not a team style. That means we need to fix it faster before the game start. So, what would it mean to you to bring? An international victory back home. This is one of my dreams. What I need to do in Dota 2 is I want to be the top team in the world. If I win, that means I have already proved myself that I make it and I make my dream come true. So you're really excited. Really excited. Yeah. And you're ready? Do you feel ready? I'm ready for that. Yeah. How have you been practicing? What have you been doing as a team? Boot camp, that sort of thing. Yeah, we have a boot camp since uh, last month. We go to Sweden, and I think we already get ready. For this tournament. What about the experience level of all of your teammates? How is that different? Are all of you really experienced, mm. or some of you less so? Well, my teams we have three old players, right? Like KY, me, and Mushi. And the other two, like Johnny and Kirchi, they are still very new for biggest tournament. Like Kirchi, this is his first year TI, so he never been so far and fight against a lot of strong team in the world. And Johnny, he's he got play from last year from the team Arrow, so I think he's maybe still will be fine. But for Kachi, let's see in this tournament. Is there anything else you want to say to fans of your team, fans of Fnatic? What would you say to people? I would say to all of my fans that I hope we can play a really full game for everyone. Enjoy the game. Thank you. Do you plan on bringing one of these back for them? Well. I think I can make it. Good luck. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. There it is then, Team Fanatic. The boys in orange are back via a number of different organisations, it has to be said. But nevertheless, they are here once again at the International and again find themselves in the lower bracket. But that won't fuss them at all. They've done it before and gone all the way through that lower bracket and they'll have the confidence to do so again. They enter the key arena, as do Fanatic, to take their places in the booze. We've got plenty to discuss uh, about these two teams. We'll start with Fnatic and Shiva. Uh, you spoke to Ohio earlier on in the year. You had a pleasure of an yeah. interview with him. Uh, you know him well and uh, lovely guy. Maybe a little overconfident in places. <laughs> you know, it, kind of a bit of a bravado interview there, I know. But uh, realistically, they aren't going to win the international, but they could go far. And because we know that they've got that kind of form and that they can surprise, you'd probably have them as your outside bet, wouldn't you? For, for me, I mean, if you think, if you go to the international, no matter on what rank you are on any ranking side, you have to believe you can win it. Otherwise, you yeah. know, you don't, ha you don't have a place here. Yeah. So I, I'm really happy that he thinks, you know, we can win it. And even if they don't, we'll provide a fun game for everybody. Well, I'm all for that. So Absolutely. That would be we, great. We need a few of that. I mean, we've enjoyed the best of ones, even if the teams haven't. We've, we've <laughs> definitely enjoyed it. It's been horrible for the teams, <laughs> I have to say. Um, a star player, pal. You know, as good as Ohio is, and maybe back in TI3, he, he probably was their best player. But right now, here, here and now in TI5, it's got to be Mushy, isn't it? Mushy is always, like, he always performs super well at TI. And in general, he's a very scary player to play against because, you know, he, blank, he, he can play anything. And he's 
always the backbone of whatever team he, he, he is in. So he he got to be, you know, when you go into that game, you got to be, you got to feel good about having Mushi on your side, you know, and like he's going to play the game with me and try to win with me. Okay. There's a number of other players in the team. Who, who stands out for you, Alan? Uh, on Fnatic? Yeah. I mean, I think Ketchik Imba has really shown flashes of brilliance as, as kind of the young gun uh, player that started in a core position for them, made the transition over to kind of a hard farming four fairly well. I, I mean, really, this is an SEA all-star team. And, you know, Mad used the word legend in talking about our previous matchup. I mean, there's, there is no player that you can call a legend in Dota 2 more so than Mushi. I mean, he and, he and Fear really, to me, are the, are the Roger Federers of Dota. And there's really nothing in the game that they don't do well. Twitch chat is now going mad. There are two Roger Federers. It could happen. Okay. I'm glad you brought out Ketchigimba because I also want to catch up with Ketchigimba. Let's find out from him what he thinks of the international. When I was 10 years old, I go to a land cafe with my brother and we just starting to see all the land cafe playing a Dota game. So we learned it there. Most of the older players at the Lane Cafe, around 18 or 19 years old. Kachi, he's easy to get close with everyone because he's just like a very simple guy. You can talk any topic with him anytime. Kachi means small in Malay, so everybody starts calling him Kachi because he's so small. And then he thinks he's overpowered or something, so he calls himself imbalance. Kachi Imba, because he thinks he's a small imbalance guy. <laughs> Basically, we were re representing Malaysia. After we achieved some achievements, the government looked at us and we were like, hey, these guys are pretty good and they're representing us. And then they start recognizing esports a lot more. They form a body, Esports Malaysia, to try to grow the esports scene. There are a lot of players, it's just that some of them are just not getting the chance. I found Kijit because we play a lot of land tournament and I feel that he can be very, very good in the pro gamer. So I asked him to join our team. Almost every Malaysian player may look up to Mushi because he's a very skillful and experienced player in Southeast Asia. Whenever people talk about Kachi, they thought of him as like, oh, he's Mushi's student, you know, he's Mushi's student, and that's all they think of it. I think Mushi, it made me very a professional gamer. I think he's a good, good guy. I just treat him as my little brother. Also, I promise his mom that I will take care of him. I think he has a lot of potential in his future. He can be better than anyone in Malaysia, even better than me. I absolutely love stories like that. They, they are, for me, what makes this tournament so special. It's not just the money, the trophy, the, the glamour and the, the glitz and the, and the, and the tournament area. It, it's stories like that, the human side of these stories. We've, we've heard so many of them today, uh, but that one's one of my favourites. We've got 30 seconds until the draft starts. Very quickly, we haven't really talked about VP, so we'll talk about them very quickly. Uh, do they have what it takes to go through the next round? Yeah, I think FNG is an excellent captain, one of the best in the CIS scene, and he's going to lead his team to victory. Okay. Yeah, and, and G um, is the most explosive, one of the most explosive players in Pro Dota 2 right now. I mean, he he, he averaged over nine kills per game in this patch, uh, is insanely aggressive early on, and that's where, where Fnatic can really have their problems. I see VP taking this. Okay, thank you very much. We'll be right back with the draft. Virtus Pro versus Fnatic.